Hey guys, it's Jonathan from Wrestling Talking the Shop, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do our second episode of uh, the Week in Review of Wrestling, and uh, I decided that I had got my Andy Kaufman shirt in from uh, Pro Wrestling Tees this week, and I said, well, hell, I'll pull out my neck brace. <laughs> that, uh, anyway, it's a little tight, so I'm going to take it off now. Just there is a... But uh, throw that out to the crowd out there. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, anyways, we got we appreciate you guys. I know a lot, not a lot of people are watching these videos, but I appreciate the ones that are. And uh, uh, you gonna come on in, Lizzie? Sit down. And uh, we had a crazy week. We went to uh, this is Lindsay. We got our I got my our, we're festive for the we're feeling festive. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but anyway, uh, we had a crazy week. We went to Dynamite in Arlington, Texas, and then we went to Ring of Honor. Uh, final battle Friday night and collision uh, last night and uh, I'm tired and that's on top of uh, you know our, our regular other duties that we do every day but uh, anyway I guess the top story coming out of this week and uh, it's got me a little worried for impact or not impact for AEW uh, I don't know how how things are gonna work out uh, that uh, Warner Brother has opened up talks with uh, WWE again, when with the signing of CM Punk, and he may be the one to, uh, you know, he may end up with the last laugh here, if uh, because they, I mean, if Warner Brothers gets Raw Monday Night Raw, I don't even know if it's going to be on Monday, but if Warner Brothers gets Raw, they're not interested in AEW, and I don't think AEW is going to go away. I mean, Hell Impact has been hopped around for 20 years, and they're still. Still around, but it won't be the same. It won't be the same AEW. I mean, they won't be able to keep stars like John Moxley, Daniel, or Brian Danielson. You know, all those big. They won't. You know, because they got a ton of. I mean, it'll be. It, I mean, I don't think it's going anywhere. But I don't think that it will uh, be able to uh, uh, stay at that level there. Uh, let's see here. Uh, What'd you think of uh, Impact? Or, I keep saying Impact. I got Impact on my mind. I didn't even watch Impact this week. What did you think of Dynamite? Um, Dynamite was good. I mean, all, honestly, every show we went to this week was really good. The one that really surprised me the most probably was the Ring of Honor because I really wasn't expecting it to be that good. But honestly, it was a really, it was a pretty good card on it. And then last night's Collision was just like a packed card. Like every match was really good. Um, crowd was really into it. The Ring of Honor, Honor there wasn't as many people there. It's no. a smaller, you know, it was a smaller show. I mean, it was but, just, the show was a good show. I mean, the crowd was not. I mean, the uh, of course, the uh, honoring Dre Briscoe match was the the card. And, and the uh, yeah, it was the highlight. The Athena show. match was good too. I was really oh, impressed. I with, liked the Athena match. I was really was impressed good. with it. I didn't have. I wasn't expecting much, and I really thought that Athena was going to lose the title. And go on to uh, be on AEW regularly on a regular basis, which I think she needs to be featured on Dynamite and the Collision on a regular basis. But you know that's anyway. But uh, it was a really good, uh, I mean, a really good show. I mean, I don't follow Ring of Honor on a regular basis. You know, I did. Matter of fact, we could have stayed and watched the uh, this coming week's tapings, but we didn't. We were just tired. I mean. You know, we and, and I see where Tony Khan introduced a new, a new uh, Ring of Honor Television uh, Championship. I mean, I don't really for women. Uh, I don't really see all the need. It seems like everybody's a champion in that in uh, wrestling today. Even WWE has a lot of champions. I mean, they, hell, they got the NXT uh, North American Title featured on uh, Raw and SmackDown every week. I don't really see the need for that, but. Yeah. You know, I guess that's just the world we're living in where everybody's a champion, you know. There's a lot of champions. I don't really see the... Well, part of me, that I think, well, what do we got Ring of Honor for? But I kind of see it, you know, it's kind of their developmental, their, you know, their third show. So I don't know. I mean, uh, I just can't follow it because I just don't have time to watch all this wrestling. I mean, I'm... Right. And as far as like the Dynamite show, of course the Von Erics were the highlight. Of the well, that show. was actually on Rampage. They, actually, but it, we've seen it yeah. Wednesday. Well, they were teasing it for Wednesday, anyways. Yeah, that was a disappointment. That did not come out until Rampage. But they had a good crowd. I mean, the crowd was livid when uh, Kevin Von Erich put the claw on uh, 
Uh, yeah, they were lit. What was that guy's name? What's his name? Um, Where's the cap you're always talking oh, about? Oh, Jake Hager. Jake Hager, yeah. He yeah. puts a call on him, you know. And he sold it for him. Uh, Kevin's looking a little old and slow, but, you know, he is old, so, you know. Yeah, he's looking extremely Honestly. old. I mean, um, you we'll, know, what do we'll, you expect? we'll do a review of that movie. We're going to go watch it uh, Friday when it comes out. We'll yeah, do a review of that movie. But anyway, we'll get right into this Raw. We'll talk about the Raw rundown here. Uh, Jay Uso opened the show, and uh, uh, they are uh, he, the Yeet is back, so the crowd was back into the Yeet, you know. And uh, then when he gets in a promo segment, and Yeet is the new what? One of these days you're gonna say, I wish he would have got away from that Yeet because they're going Yeet, 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 Yeet. And I get ten years from now, people are like, Oh, I'm so tired of this damn Yeet because when you when they catch on to something like that, I mean, Stone Cold did that what twenty years ago, and it I still. I saw somebody wearing a what shirt yesterday. Yeah, you go to a wrestling <laughs> show, I mean, they're like, what, what, what? They're like, you know. But anyway, uh, Drew McIntyre come out, and they had they opened the show, first match on the show. Of course, Drew McIntyre won, and uh, he's uh, he's uh, brutally, uh, let's see, what I got brutal here, evil, brutal, I guess, you know, I don't know why I wrote that down here. I guess <laughs> Drew McIntyre's evil, you know, and then, then we go to a backstage segment. And uh, problems in the Judgment Day, and uh, of course, you know, I, I you can tell what's going to happen. They're going to end up. Uh, I figure uh, Damian Priest is going to lose his match when he catches in the Money in the Bank, and then they're going to boot him from the Judgment Day. You can kind of tell it's between the rift is between uh, Rhea Ripley and um, uh, Damian Priest, you know, and you can kind of tell that. But anyway, they were on a united front here and. Rhea Ripley versus Maxine Dupree. Maxine is really green, really green, and uh, I mean, I just that's one thing that I noticed out of this show. I mean, once they said it, she'd only had that was like her very she hadn't had very many matches. I can't remember exactly what they said, but uh, anyway, she. I mean, I just come up. Uh, CM Punk come out, and of course, these uh, he apologized for walking out uh, ten years ago, and. Uh, he, I mean, apparently he had a lot of history at that building. I mean, he had, uh, he had got sent to Ohio Valley Wrestling there, and he had just talked about all that show. And I guess we're building up now. And then uh, they, uh, <clears throat> that he he come out and said it's been ten, almost ten years, and he was in that same very building, I guess, where he had his last match before walking out, or maybe he walked out in that building. I can't really remember what he said. But anyway, and uh, CM Punk, I mean, he's, he apologized to the crowd, and, you know, he's the hero and whatnot. Now comes Seth Rollins. I mean, and they're really, they're strongly teasing. I figured they would go ahead and book that match for the Royal Rumble, but I guess it kind of makes sense. You know, he's not, that would kind of look bad. You know, he'd come in and get a title shot to first next pay-per-view. But uh, anyway, they were strongly teasing that match where he's going to, CM Punk is going to win the Royal Rumble and going, maybe I'll pick you, Seth Rollins, which... I mean, he's going to pick Seth Rollins, I mean, I would think, because he chose Raw, you know. If he wanted to go after Roman Reigns, he would have signed with, I don't know. Yeah, but uh, I really hope Cody Rhodes wins. He needs to win the title, and we need to finish Cody's story. But everybody's got a story to tell now. You know, everybody's got too many stories. <laughs> uh, but anyway, and then we go have a real, uh, strong segment, and uh, I don't know. I mean, before before Survivor Series, I was stuck uh, Roman, Cody Rhodes is going to win the Royal Rumble. Now, I don't know that Cody Rhodes is going to I mean, I can't tell it. You know, I can't call it. But Bronson Reed versus Ivar. Uh, good match. Of course, big, big man match. Yeah, good big man match. And then, uh, of course, Bronson Reed's the winner. And then, uh, Caden Carter versus, uh, Kate, Katina Chance and Caden Carter versus Candice LaRue and Indy Hartwell with Chelsea Green on commentary. And, of course, uh, uh, Katina Chance and Caden Carter were the winners, and they're going to challenge for the titles uh, this coming week on Raw. I mean, this time of year, you just they're just kind of holding it in. You know, they're getting ready to start build for the Royal Rumble, and it's Christmas time, and you know they know people are traveling, so they're just uh, they're just. I mean, to me, this is the bore most boring time of the year to be a wrestling fan. You know, because you know usually you get Santa Claus segments and stuff, but it's better now than it has been. Uh, Becky Lynch out in the ring to call out Nia Jax. Started five years ago. I mean, that was the best thing that ever happened to Becky Lynch when she got popped in the jaw. Broke her nose. Broke her nose. Uh, but uh, they, they're going to battle. Uh, let's see. Oh, I guess they. 
Did you say? I guess are they, they're gonna match battle. She broke her nose in the battle. Yeah, right? I know, but they're gonna. Are they gonna have a match at Royal Rumble? Or did I see that? Did I, see I don't that? know if they ever really said. I don't know. Kind of, they're just kind of teasing them, I yeah. think, to start with. Cody Rose. They're going, dude. Cody Rose was asked about. Uh, uh, Cody Rose was asked backstage about CM Punk what he thought. He said, "Motherfuckers coming here when I'm trying to win a WWE." No, he didn't say that, but uh, <laughs> that's what he was thinking. But of course, he's going to be positive because Cody's always positive. But and then we got Imperium versus Miz and DIY, and of course, uh, the Miz and DIY one. DIY definitely has Imperium's number there. They've won like three weeks in a row. But and then uh, the main event there it was Shinsuke Nakamura versus Cody Rhodes, and I thought for sure we're going to see. Uh, Cody go over strong, and you know, but it wasn't what happened. I mean, Shinsuke was about to win, uh, and or not Shinsuke, Cody Rhodes was about to finish him, and Shinsuke blew that red stuff in his face. But uh, and anyway, it was Cody won by disqual disqualification. But and that's gonna pretty much sum up Raw. Let's see here, what else? I I watched SmackDown. I didn't watch it on the ability to <laughs> to review it. Uh, I know Roman Reigns come back. And he didn't really say a lot, you know, and um, I guess they're building towards a Roman. I thought they were going to go. And I know AJ Styles made his return. And I would think that AJ Styles would be the one to challenge uh, uh, Roman Reigns for the championship at uh, Royal Rumble. But I don't know. It, it may end up being Randy Orton. Or they may not even, they may even announce that match. I can't even really remember. Um, I just feel so bad for LA Knight because he's gotten pushed back, you know, back down the card, you know. And I was really hoping he would uh, be a world champion there. But uh, anyway, I did see where, uh, uh, hell up, my mind went blank. Santa Claus, or I'll dress up as Santa Claus Saturday and see if I can get on. Let's see where Randy Orton won, uh, beat Jay Uso, or not Jay, Jimmy Uso, and uh, Jimmy Uso, and, they're, and then uh, they're playing off Solo Sika. Solo Sika is going to be the back, of, I guess he's the the honor, what do you call that when you're the honor to the throne, heir to the throne, heir, oh, heir to the, the throne, throne. Or, you know, the tribal right chief, tribal chief, uh, you know, but anyway, that pretty much, not a lot, not really, a, the big news of the week was, uh, <laughs> Uh, WWE jumping to uh, TBS or TNT. That was the big news of the week. I mean, that's all I could see on my phone and whatnot. It was like, all that all week, you know. Uh, and then, uh, let's we'll see. The great best match, Dynamite, was definitely, I really thought Swerve should have won, but they didn't. And, of course, John Moxley leads in the uh, Continental Classic now. And uh, World's End, we're going to get where the Blue League and the Gold League uh, meet. And, you know, and... I don't know who's gonna who's gonna win it, you know. Uh, I guess uh, John Moxley's the he's the overall winner with uh, twelve points. And is there any? 
I can't remember who's in. And then he's in the gold league though. I can't remember who's in the uh, blue league. And then um, Brian Danielson. He's um, he's, he's got like nine. Yeah, he's got nine. And then, Eddie's got nine. I'm really hoping um, that Swerve Strickland wins it, and then uh, maybe by uh, full gear he's challenging for the world title. You know, when Samoa Joe beats no, some we didn't get any uh, no Edge, no Christian. No Ric Flair. No we're Ric really Flair. Yeah, we were hoping to see Ric Flair. And did not see Ric Flair. We didn't see MJF. No, uh, I know. Uh, but we got to see. Uh, no Sting. A great match between uh, Brian Danielson last night and uh, Brody uh, Brody King yeah. on. Uh, yeah, Brian Danielson was a workhorse. I mean, he worked all week long. Yeah. Him and. Um, John Moxley, they even worked. Claudio. For, yeah, Claudio. I mean, that was a hell of a match at that Ring of Honor, uh, Ring of Honor uh, final battle. Yeah. It but, was a really good match. Uh, I mean, I had fun. I'd, uh, that was. We had awesome seats at Dynamite. Yeah. Because, like, it's a small venue. So, in, like, I, I don't know how. But anyway, we got really close. And we were right by, like, everybody was exiting, like, off stage. So, we were hollering at everybody as they come out the side entry. Yeah. And that was a lot of fun. We had a good time with that. Um, but, yeah, overall, it was a very fun week. But, I mean, I'm going to Dynamite next week in Oklahoma City. And then, uh, after that, or this week, I'm going to Dynamite. And then Friday, I'm going to go see the Iron Claw, and uh, we'll do a review on that. And I mean, I've I've already seen where some people have seen it, and they said that it's not historically. The time frames don't really add up, but it's hard to get somebody's life story condensed down into a. Uh, and it's they got to put a little Hollywood. You know, it's too. a two hour movie. You know, that's why a lot of these shows like they do like these weekly these 10 weekly segment you know like you know like a mini series yeah mini series yeah i mean that's really the best way to do that you know if they ever do that something like that on miss mcmahon i need to do them i used to think i want to see a movie on miss mcmahon but no i want to see a mini series <laughs> but uh anyway we'll jump right into the uh history segment uh we'll uh december 11th 1975 all japan uh pro, pro wrestling holds its first ever show in the famous Rodokan Hall in Tokyo, Japan. The main event sees Giant Baba defeat uh, and the Destroyer defeat uh, Jumbo Titsurami and Dory Funk Jr. And then uh, December 11th, on, on this day, December 11th in 1997, at a taping of Monday Night Raw in uh, Massachusetts, WWE Commissioner sets up a European Championship match between Shawn Michaels and his Degenerates. DJ, DX cohort Triple H rather than the sow the seeds of the television the twin tension between the two they end up they like you know they like do this and they I mean I remember that you know and then they celebrate the title change afterwards I can't remember which one oh Shawn Michaels uh, laid down for Triple yeah, H he laid down. and then at 2012 or 2002 on this date at a TNA at a weekly TNA pay per view in Nashville. Sonny Soko dethroned Jerry Lynn to win the NWA X Division Championship, you know. So that's what you, you know, AEW could go to the weekly pay-per-views. That would never work. I mean, uh, it did, TNA did it for a long time. TNA, 2005 TNA turning point uh, took place at the Impact Zone in Orlando. No title changes took place on the event. How, uh, uh, Jeff Jarrett retaining his NWA World Heavyweight Championship against Rhino in the main event. Sabu defeated Abyss in a barbed wire massacre match. Mm. Yeah, let's see. And on this day in 2011, WWE held tribute to the troops in uh, Fayetteville, North Carolina. This was the first time the event had been taped in an actual arena, then then on a uh, then at like a military base, you know. And they taped it, at, or they it, it went live this week in the arena. And then in 2019, all AEW wrestling held the 11th episode of. Uh, AEW Dynamite in Garland, Texas. The main event saw the Young Bucks defeat Santana and Ortiz in a street fight. I believe I was at that show. I think we were. Mm -hmm. we were. Uh, they always come to uh, Dallas area on uh, around, Christmas around Christmas time. We've been every year. Yeah. But um, and that honestly is like probably the best venue. It's I mean, yeah. well, other than the one in Arlington, because it's and they small. Don't. Um, they don't get the crowds that they got when they first come out. Of course, you know everybody. You know they were hot. They were the new new thing on the block. Block, you know, and they were getting big crowds. But they had a pretty good crowd there for uh, yeah, collision. collision. Was probably yeah. I, well. I don't know if it was bigger than Dynamite's crowd. I mean, because it's hard to say. Yeah. But um, I hadn't seen the numbers on it yet. But um, but they were both big crowds. Dynamite was a big crowd. 
And the collision was a big crowd. And they filled it in there pretty good for Ring of Honor. Yeah. I don't know. It took them a little while. But they changed the time on it. So I kind of figure a lot of people were uh, didn't catch that, that they changed the time like right before, you know, like a couple days before it happened. So there's probably some people that didn't notice that. But anyway, we'll go a little step. Uh, December 12th on this date, uh, in 1989, WWE take the match part of their pay-per-view concept, No Holds Barred, the match... Uh, the match, the movie, the match, the movie. It was basically a match between Macho Man and uh, Zeus versus Hulk Hogan and Brutus the Beefcake. Brutus Beefcake, and uh, of course Hulk Hogan and Brutus won. Uh, that was a great movie. They used, they did that in promotion. You got they did it on pay per view. Like you watch the match, then you could watch the movie. Uh, on this date in 1990, AWA World Heavyweight Champion Larry Sabisco surrendered the title when he signed for WCW. The title was then retired, and the company would end up folding the following year. Uh, yeah, I mean, that was a bad deal. I mean, when AWA, but they were dead by 1990. And then in 2014, on this day, Kyle O'Reilly defeated Ricochet to retain the PWG world title in uh, California. He was uh, beaten moments later by Roderick Strongs in the Guerrilla Warfare, Guerrilla Warfare Welfare Match. Warfare Match. Excuse me. Pardon me. <laughs> uh... 2004 WWE uh, Armageddon took place at the uh, in Georgia. The main event saw JBL retain the WWE Championship match in a four-way against uh, Booker T, Eddie Guerrero, and uh, oh Daniel Pruder. <laughs> he was a tough enough winner, and he ended up getting cancer and passing away. Uh, I guess he was in the four-way match. That's all I see, but I can't really. I remember Daniel Pruder, and that was a bad deal. He passed away. Uh, but uh, he was the first. Was he the first ever? Let's see. Maybe the best. Oh, oh. See, I don't know. But he won the. What was that? Maybe he was best remembered yeah. for being the winner of the million dollar tough enough prize. And he, I guess, got to, he got to uh, compete in the. Forty four way for the WWE Probably. championship. Yeah. And then in twenty twenty, Impact Wrestling ran Final Resolution, where Metal Leak defeated. Uh, uh, I can't remember. What's that, guys? What's that? Well, Rohit Raju. I just probably slaughtered that. To capture yeah. the X Division Championship in the main event with Rich Swan retained as the world champion against Chris Bay. Yep. And, uh, we'll skip right along to December 13th. Moving on. Next day. Uh, Anton Antonio Inoki was fired from J uh, Japan Wrestling Association after a failed... Uh, to take over uh, the company. The following uh, year, he would start his own company, which we know today as New Japan Pro Wrestling. Mm -hmm. We went and saw that not too Yeah, and uh, it's our video. In 1989, on this day, uh, December 13th, Andre the Andre the Giant won the last of his uh, last title of his illustrated career as he as he and Haku took on the Colossal Connection, beat Demolition in Huntsville, Alabama, to win the WWF Tag Team Championships. Uh, That's a year old porn. Yep. <laughs> and, uh, see, I'll let you read a couple of these. Sure. Let's get right here. Alrighty. 1989, also, WCW presented Starcade 89, Future Shock from the Omni in Atlanta, Georgia. The show was built around two round robin tournaments, a singles and a tag. Sting won the singles tournament over Lex Luger, Ric Flair, and the Great Muta. And the tag team tournament was also won by the Road Warriors and also included Doom, the Steiner Brothers, and the New World's New Wild Samoans. 1993, in the final of a tournament to crown the first WWF Women's Champion since 1990, uh, Lundra Blaze beat Heidi Lee Morgan in New York. And, she, and Lundra Blaze would go on to hold the title, I guess. She was never defeated for it and ended up throwing it in the trash can on WCW Monday Night Nitro. Mm -hmm. um, and then they wanted to get it back, and she didn't want to give it back. <laughs> they wanted to get it back. Oh, so, you're talking about on yeah. the hidden treasure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, 1995, two years to the day since being brought back into the company, the WWF Women's Championship was deactivated after the champion Alundra Blaze and the rest of the women's division were released in a cost-cutting move. Blaze would soon turn up on, there you go, there you go, they're talking about it, WCW Nitro and famously throw the belt, which he retained possession of in the trash. Uh, Anyways, since we already said that one. Uh, women's wrestling has certainly come a long ways uh, because 
for a long time there was no women's wrestling. You know, there was. There's always been women's wrestling, but it wasn't featured like it is today. Yeah. Skip some. Uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. 1999 Monatro from New Orleans, Louisiana. The Outsiders defeated uh, oh Scott Hall and Kevin Nash. The Outsiders defeated Goldberg and Bret Hart to win the WCW Tag Team Championship. And then let's see the most recent one. 2019 is a momentous night in Ring of Honor as their final battle pay per view took place in Baltimore, Maryland. As three title changes took place and final three matches of the card, Dragon Lee. Defeated Shane Taylor for the Ring of Honor television title in the first change of the night. In the following match, Jay Lethal and Jonathan Gresham bested Jay and Mark Briscoe to win the Ring of Honor Tag Team Championship. Finally, PCO defeated Rush in the Ring of Honor World Heavyweight Championship. They didn't last long after that. <laughs> I mean, and then Tony Khan ended up assuming ownership. Yep. Let's see here. I'll read it. On December 14th in 1973, Vern Gagne won his sixth AWA World Heavyweight Champion over the Crusher in Minneapolis, Minnesota. You know, uh, you know. of course, when you own a promotion, you can win it as much, winning lose it as much as you want to. <laughs> but uh, let's see here. We'll skip right ahead there. In 1992, the Hellraisers, Road Warrior Hawk, and... Uh, Kinso, Kinsi, Kinsuki Sasaki defeated uh, Tony Holm and Scott Norton to win the uh, IWGP Hip Tag Team Champions. And that was when uh, Hawk kind of went to Japan. He was kind of doing a Road Warrior uh, gimmick without Animal. And I remember I seen an interview where Animal was like pissed, you know. But anyway, they were on the outs at that time. But they ended up making up and uh, reuniting there and uh, re in the hell. You know, I'd be pissed too if I created something and somebody was still half of 2013 Ring of Honor's final battle took place at the Hammerstein Ballroom in New York City. Tommaso Ciampa won the Ring of Honor T Television Champion from Matt Taven in the main event. Adam Cole retained the World Championship from uh, Jay Briscoe and Michael Elgin after the match. Chris Hero made his return to Ring of Honor after his WWE release. And uh, it's crazy to think that those guys uh, did all that in Ring of Honor, you know. But you know, anyway, that's that's. Uh, and now they're like Adam Cole. Is, well, Adam Cole is featured weekly, you know, which I know he did NXT stuff, you know. But I'm ready for Adam Cole to come back as soon as his ankle heals up. Mm -hmm. And in 2018, uh, Ring of Honor's final battle took place. Oh, did I already read that? Yeah, yeah. Right okay. On. And in 2014, WWE t TLC uh, took place in uh, Cleveland, Ohio. The event saw Dolph Ziegler win the Inco Intercontinental Championship against Luke Harper in a ladder match. And the main event saw uh, Bray Wyatt defeat Ambrose in a uh, TLC match. Oh, no, this is actually a different one. It's what? just at the same place. Oh. <laughs> anyway, I'll let you read that one there. Uh, and then Ring Honor again, final battle. But this is 2018. 
Hammerstein Ballroom again. Them is like that venue. Yeah, it's In the main deep. event, Jane and Mark Briscoe uh, won the Ring of Honor Tag Team Championships in a ladder war against reigning champions SCU, Frankie Kazarian, and Scorpion Sky. Then the Young Bucks, Matt and Nick Jackson. Kelly Klein won the Women of Honor Championship in the Fatal 4-Way against champion Sumi Saki, Karen Q, and Madison Rain. Cody Rhodes also took on Jay Lethal. A lot of these similar names you hear. Yeah. So these guys have been around the block a few places. And December 15th on this day in 1977, in the finals of the first All Japan Pro Wrestling Real World Tag, Tag League Tournament, Dory and Terry Funk defeated the Sheik in a, a duel of the Butcher in what is considered one of the greatest matches to ever take place in Tokyo, Japan. In uh, 1996, In Your House, It's Time! It's Vader Time! Uh, took place in uh, West Palm Beach, Florida. No title changes took place. And in the main event, WWF Champion Psycho Sid defeated Bret Hart. And then uh, on this day in 1997, Vince McMahon cut a promo on backstage at Monday Night Raw announced that WWE will be creating, cha uh, changing creative directions. There will be no more good guys and no more bad guys. And they will show some attitude. That ushered in the attitude era. <laughs> uh, and then on this day in 2000, e ECW taped the final ever episode of Hardcore TV from the Elks Lodge in Queens, New York. The Dudley Boys and Taz uh, WWE contracts contracted talent at that time, returning to promotion for one night only to mark, for the mark the occasion. In 2001, Russ Haas, brother of tag team partner, uh, a former WWE superstar, Charlie Haas, was found dead at his home at age 27. If you're interested, we can visit his grave on this channel. You can video shortly back. And then in 2019, TLC, uh, from the uh, Target Center in Minneapolis, Minnesota, the event saw uh, Asuka, Kyrie Singh, the Kabuki Warriors successfully defended uh, tag team championships against Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair. And then on this day, in 2021, on an episode of Impact Wrestling, the new Ring of Honor or AEW World Champion attacked Rich Sean or Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega. I'm sorry, I'm getting my words mixed up here. Kenny Omega attacked Rich Swan, and Impact Executive Don Canales signed a match for hard to. Don Callis signed the match for Hard to Kill in January, where the cleaner would face the Impact World Champion. Swan also was paid more for advertisements during. Or, uh, Impact was also. Swan was also paid more for advertisements featuring Tony Khan and Tony Schiavone aired. Uh, that was a good angle there when. Uh, but I thought, well, the cleaner, I guess the whole thing was he was going to be the, he was the belt collector, wasn't he? Was that, mm -hmm. Yeah. He was, and he ended up having, he had that title. And then, he had a bunch of titles. Yeah. And then he, he lost it to Christian Cage, you know, and uh, he, uh, and then he, he was the Triple A mega champion, you know, and, but that was a good time. He about wore himself down. Yeah. They say, I, I read something that Kenny Omega was hurt, you know, so I don't know. Uh, I don't know what's going on. Definitely a great wrestler. You can tell those guys when they get a little, you know, their bodies don't hold up, you know, like they should. On December 16th, this day in uh, 2000, Blue Demon, one of the biggest icons of Mexican Lucha Labre, died of a heart attack at the age of 78. Good lie. Hope I make 78. And then on this day in 2007, WWE's Armageddon took place in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The main event saw Edge and defeat Batista and The Undertaker in a triple threat match to win the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I'm surprised they had never tried to bring Batista back in. Well, he's 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 busy doing his own thing. Yeah, I'm I making think movies. He, and stuff. He's in the Hall of Fame now, isn't he? No, he was going to go in the Hall of Fame, but he wanted to do it when crowds were there. So yeah, he'll yeah, get. Yeah, I think he was going to do it during COVID. They wanted him during COVID. On this day in 2013, after a long contract impasse, AJ Styles left TNA Wrestling. And he had been with the company since his inception in 2002. I really thought he was going to be a lifer, you know, which, you know, he, he's definitely doing good now. Glad to see him on WWE TV. Oh, yeah. I like AJ Styles. On this day in, uh, in 2018, WWE presented TLC from, the, from California, San Jose, California. The event saw uh, the first ever women's triple threat, triple threat match, TLC match. Oscar win the SmackDown Women's Title and against incumbent champion Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair. This match, this marked the first time the belt has ever been defended in a pay-per-view main event. Earlier on the card, Dean Ambrose uh, captured the Intercontinental Champion from Seth Rollins. And uh, 
That was when the women's was hitting. Yeah, they, they were, were they were on the spot then. Yeah. On this day in uh, 1906, we go way back. Frank Gotts won the American Heavyweight Championship for the third time, defeated Fred Keel, Fred Neal in Kansas City, Missouri. And uh, Frank Gotts, whew, 1906. Mm. Long time ago. And then on, uh, not, on this day in 1979, in one of the lesser known uh, phantom title changes in wrestling history, Bob Backlund defeated Bobby Duncan in a Texas death match in New York City to win the vacant WWF championship. The title had been vacated 10 days earlier when Antonio Noki battled, battled to a draw with Backlund in uh, Japan and refused to carry on as champion as a result. WWE does not recognize this title change. They instead re, re uh, I don't know. They anyway, Backlund was champ Backlund was WWE champion from 78 to 83 is what they four year runs what uh, WWE says. I'll let you read a couple of them, Lindsay. Okay. 1995 WWE in your house number five seasons beatings took place at the Hershey Park Arena in Hershey, Pennsylvania. In the main event, Bret Hart defended the WWF Championship against the British Bulldogs, and The Undertaker beat Mabel in a casket match. The British Bulldog. No. Oh, sorry. He Bulldog. didn't beat. He didn't beat. He didn't beat him team. and uh... just one. <laughs> um, I can't read apparently either. David Boy um, Smith. Yeah. In 1999, Mike Awesome defeated Masato Tanaka to become the new ECW World Heavyweight Champion on ECW on TNN tapings in Nashville, Tennessee. It was a fat chick thriller, uh, thriller, uh, Mike Awesome. He was, you know, they did that in WCW. Uh, the fat chick thriller, thriller vanilla or something like that. I can't remember what his name <laughs> it's was. It's been a minute. Uh, the final Starcade pay-per-view under the WCW umbrella took place at the MCI Center in Washington, D.C. Um, said it was brought, bought by 50,000 homes, so not, not a huge buy-in. No, very poor. Yeah, did, did not do well. Okay, uh, 2005 Ring of Honor held final battle at Inman Sports Complex, Addison, Edison, New Jersey. The co-main event saw Kenta defeat Loki to, Low key. Low key to retain the GHC Junior Heavyweight Championship, and Brian Danielson successfully defended the Ring of Honor World Championship against Naomaki Marfuji. And the Ring of Honor Tag Team Championship changed hands with Generation Next, Roderick Strong, and Austin Aries defeated Saul Renaro and Tony, Mom Mom I cannot say that, Mamaluki. <laughs> anyway, some of these names are hard to say. Um, 2006, WWE Armageddon took place in Richmond, Virginia. And the main event was John Cena and Batista defeat Finley and King Booker. And the true memorable moments happened on the undercard. In the opening match, Kane defeated MVP in the second ever Inferno match. We go up so. to 2017. Ridiculous. And then 2017, WWE Clash of the Champions took place in Boston, Massachusetts. And the main event was AJ Styles to successfully defend the WWE Championship against Jinder Mahal. And the night's only title change was Dolph Ziggler won the International Championship had a triple threat match against Bobby Roode and defending champion Baron Corbin. See, that's what you get when you have no competition. You get WWE champions like Jinder Mahal. So, whether you're an AEW fan or a WWE fan or whatever, if you've got competition, it's good for the wrestling industry. You know, I like I like wrestling as wrestling. Whether it's AEW, WWE, I'll go to a WWE show. I just happen... If they run three shows in my area, I'll go to them. You know, I'm a wrestling fan. I'm not a WWE fan. I'm not an AEW fan. But without any competition, you get champions like Jinder Mahal. You remember those days when uh, Jinder Mahal was WWE? Not knocking Jinder Mahal. They basically Mahal put him in there because they were going over to India. Same. I'm not knocking Jinder Mahal, but he should have never been a <laughs> WWE championship or a champion. But anyway, that's going to wrap this show up for this week, guys. Uh, Appreciate you watching, like, and subscribe. We're going to do a lot of good stuff on the channel this week. So, uh...
coming up. Yeah, Next happy Sunday holidays. Christmas. Merry Christmas. So. Uh, happy Hanukkah. Whatever you, <laughs> whatever you, uh, whatever you're doing. Yeah. Happy to you. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. <laughs>